Oh, goodness. Look at that one, guys. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Dog. That's a dog. Good morning, everybody. How y'all doing this morning? I'm doing good. I'm going crappie fishing today. Guys, I was going to go out to uh, Lake Texoma, and the wind's supposed to get up to 22 miles an hour today, this afternoon. And I was like, not, not that lake. I ain't going on that lake at 22. I saw a couple posts on Facebook where, you know, guys were complaining about Lake Louisville, saying... It's terrible, they can't catch any fish, where are the fish, what's going on? So I figured, hey, that's a challenge. These guys are right now currently saying they're having no success. And I'm talking guys with boats, uh, you know, side scan, live scope, everything, the whole nine, and they still can't catch crappie. So I was like, well, let's go put my skill set to the test and see what happens. And I can tell you one thing, the first thing that you need to think about summertime crappie fishing in Texas is you need to take live bait minnows particularly so we have a hatch well, let's back up so we have crappie spawn um every all fish spawn early to late spring and then they lay their eggs their eggs hatch and we have the hatch and that hatch produces a lot of little fry so there's fry all over everything the fry on the rocks there's fry on the trees there's fry everywhere so all these fish have tons and tons and tons of food. Like they can just eat whatever, whenever. And so I think that's the reason it's so hard to tempt them with jigs during the summertime is because of that fry is just plentiful and they're not hungry. We drop a minnow in the water. You've hooked a minnow. I usually hook them through underneath the chin, up through the nostrils. I know for fish don't really have chins, but under the jaw, let's just put it that way. So we hook them through here and just toss them out there and um, the fish is going to thrash around and try to get off the hook and I think that thrashing motion is what's going to cause the reactionary strike from the crappie well crappie are sight feeders first and then they have a lateral line that detects vibrations secondarily well I think that lateral line is going to trigger I think they're going to go searching for what's thrashing around um, especially if it's really close to them and you're going to get that reactionary bite even when they're not hungry you know, I've caught several. I've caught several crappie recently that were their little bellies were just fat, like they had swallowed a tennis ball. So, and they still hit my minnow. So, first thing about minnows is you need to keep the minnows cool. If you don't keep them cool, then they're going to die. And even if they don't die, they're close to death, and they're not going to be active. The more active a minnow is, the more vibrations you're going to get in the water, the more likely to get a reactionary strike you're going to get, especially from a bigger crappie. So you got to keep your minnows alive. Key to keeping minnows alive is keeping the water cool. You can't keep water cool in a traditional plastic minnow bucket because you're going to toss it in your live well. You're going to toss it into the, into the water on a rope. And the water surface temperature in the summer here in Texas pushes 90 degrees, sometimes higher. It's going to kill the minnows within just an hour or two, if not much sooner. So you got to keep them inside of a cooler of some sort. Now I use the Inglebait cooler. You can also use the Igloo Bait cooler. Um, there's several kinds. And basically it's an ice chest, like an insulated ice chest. And I switch out my my uh, aerator stone for a, I don't know what even this is called. It's just like a ring, an aerator ring. And it puts just more bubbles in the water, make sure the water's oxygenated. I use a 75 hour bubbler. And what I do is I go into my freezer in the house and I get my ice tray out of the bottom freezer and I pour all of this ice into that cooler. Like that. And what I do that for is to pre-chill the cooler. Now I'm going to grab the water hose and I'm going to fill this cooler about halfway to two-thirds the full of water as well so that this ice has a little more cooling power distributed with that water because it'll bring that water temp down to freezing nearly in a matter of just a few minutes and what you're doing is you're pre-chilling the insulation so you got to think of it this way if you've got this ice chest this cooler in the garage at 120 degrees inside your garage if it's known for keeping ice cold or frozen for you know a week like a yeti for example we got to know it's going to retain heat the same way so if you've set it in your garage, it's been out there a week, it's hot. 
and then you go and you put your water in there it's going to bring up the water temp because the insulation and the plastic's hot if you do this right here well obviously you know what's happening i'm pre-chilling the cooler i'm bringing the plastic temperature down to you know low 30s mid 30s i'm bringing the insulation inside insulation temperature down to also to probably high high 30s low 40s and uh am i adding that water in there as well to help bring that cooler let cool level up higher and then when i get to the mental place i'll dump all this out i'll put the mental water in there and then i'm going to drop an ice block in there and i'll show you what those look like and before you say anything i did use the ice out of the freezer in my house so i don't have to go buy a bag of ice right away and if you're worried about my wife saying anything i am the boss at my house i don't have to put up with it. i keep a couple of these in my little fridge because it's got a little freezer in the top and then I keep the rest of them in my deep freezer back there behind me. All right, so just drop these in here with your ice. Close the lid up and go put this back in the freezer before mama finds out it's gone. There's the old boat and truck. So let's get to the bait shop and see if we can get us some minnows. Lakeview Bait and Tackle, guys, right here off Lake Louisville by Sandy Beach. Let's get in here and get us some no, no, no. minnow dogs. Just met a feller that back there at the, I don't know, top of the boat ramp that recognized me from the channel. Visit with him for a second, but no, like I was saying earlier, is, I don't, I don't take that as a personal challenge against another fisherman. I mean, everybody can have a bad day, and this lake could actually be fishing really poorly because it it does fish poorly a lot of times. Lake Louisville is a really hard lake to fish on some days and amazing on others. But uh, we're going to take it as a challenge and say, all right, people are having problems. Let's go see if it's, if it's their preparation, their education, their knowledge, their skill set, or is it the lake having... You know, it's it's problems that it typically has, which is a lot of times water level. The dam open, the dam closed. Uh, the incoming dam open, the incoming dam closed. It's water levels up, down, up, down. Lots of rain, a lot of pressure. I mean, I'm out here on a Wednesday. There's jet skis, wake boats, pontoons, ski boats. There's boats everywhere. A couple of jet skis coming at me right there. There's a tuber right there. There's a bunch of, there's two, three guys in kayaks over there on a Wednesday. Imagine what this place is like on a Saturday. It's like a joke. So, anyway, got the boat in the slip. We're going to jump in here, organize everything. And we're going to go find them crappie. And show folks this lake ain't as bad as they say. It is as bad as they say. But I'm going to show them I'm better than the lake. How about that? Woo, I just crossed that lake. Well, I came down the lake to the cove I want to fish anyways, and goodness, yet the other day I fished Ray Roberts, it was really, really, really rough, and uh, I'd made mention in the video that that was like one of the roughest times I'd been on the water. Today, Louisville got that beat, and in way, I felt like I took some kidney shots from Tyson. So I'm going to show you what we got here. I'm going to try to get this camera as close as I can. So we got a 30 foot lay down right here, okay? It's right in front of us. Now if you notice, there's the lay down, and then there's a branch that goes down, and in the fork of that branch, in 14 foot of water, we got crappie. And I'm gonna tell you right now, there's probably 10 or 12 of them in that fork. And for the, from the looks of them, they're big girls. So we're going after those. See what we got in there. Now you got some more up here. I tend to think those are smaller fish. I got one sitting back here on the tree on the uh, root ball, but I'm sure there's a couple more around it. And there's one right there, kind of moving back and forth. So let's go after these big girls right here and see what we can get. And guys, I ain't playing around right now with jigs and stuff. We're gonna go straight live bait. No messing around. And that's 15 foot front of the boat, so I got to pitch to them. May get hung up, but it's worth a try. And I want to apologize in advance. I'm facing the wind, and it's kind of howling, tunneling right, right through here. 
So we're gonna do our best. I'm going with a mid seat, ACC crappie sticks, 12 foot rod, um, cork handle, 10 pound braid, power pro braid, just a standard like number, I think number four, I don't know, Aberdeen minnow hook here. I can get it untangled and don't stick myself. And uh, split shot, it's right above it, about 14 inches. Minnow hook. Let's get us a log minnow. All right, guys, remember what I told you guys about how to keep these minnows alive. Um, that water I just stuck my hand in to get this minnow out is really cold. So I'm sure they're pretty happy in there for, for the day. All right, some of those fish have moved. Um, it's already, I see, because we got catfish coming in there. There's catfish coming in there trying to feed. So my crappie are moving around. Oh, okay, we got one. There we go, he's a big one. It's a big something. I don't feel like, oh, crappie. I feel like something else. Crappie don't feel like that. That's a catfish. I knew it wasn't a crappie. Oh, that's fine. A blue cat. No, a channel cat. That's a channel cat. Surely that's not a bunch of channel cat down there. Surely. Well, channel cat will hit minnows, so we can keep him for now. I might let him go later. Channel cat eat good. My minnow's swimming all around trying to stay away. Let's see if we can keep an eye on it. There we go. Oh, something big moved in there. Might be an old cat. Ah, I got him. I got something. Feels like a crappie. Oh yeah, nice one. There we go. That's what we're looking for right there. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we're looking for right there. Yeah, Louisville may be fishing rough, but we'll keep an eye on it. There we go. Got a little something. Got a little, little something. A little old crop dog. That's a keeper. Oh, that's a keeper. Now, Louisville, we got to consider keepers. Uh, any other lake, maybe not. They're moving around as soon as I got in there. They moved around. I either spooked them. There we go. Got him. Yeah, I didn't spook them. Hey, that's a keeper. That's a nice one. That's bigger than that 11. That's probably a little over 11 right there. All right. I don't usually keep them that small. I don't have to, but today I have to. Uh, today I have to. Look at them jumping around, acting all crazy. Little old pup dog, look at that, I told you. It's little old pups. He's a pup dog. Yeah. The fastest swimming pup dog. Might be some nice fish in there though. Got one, he was just sitting on it. Oh, nice crappie. Nice fish. All right. We can do that. That's the size we're going to get. I'm good with that. It's Louisville. We're good with that. I see fish down there but the way they're grouped up that's the way small ones group up that's kind of what I'm expecting out of this smaller ones are they 10 small yeah that's a keeper yeah so we got 10 smalls not not like dink dinks so we got a whole bunch of them down there so maybe we can see if, we can do it. See if he makes it Let's see if he makes it. Make it. Did he make it? 
It'll stop kicking. He makes it. That's the bear fish is almost 11. So, yeah. 11 is in. 11 is in. Something got it. Something got out of it. Busted up the hole. Oh, yeah. That's a big one. All right. Yeah. That's a nice fish. Well, that's big for today. That's big for today. It's not big for all time. It's big for today. Based on what we've been catching in the last couple hours, that's that's big for today. There go six. That's half dozen in there. And we can just sit here and pound us out a good half limit. I think's enough fish to know we had a good day. We all think half limit. I think half limit's a good day. I don't need limit, that's for sure. No reason for me to be trying to catch a limit. Unnecessary. There we go, got him. Gave him a sec, little or small. Keeper, let's see. Yeah, this one's boogered up. Let's see how bad. See if it's just a scratch or... Yeah, that's just a scratch. Let's see what we got. Is it legal? It looks legal. Is he legal? Oh yeah, well over legal. That's 11. That's 11. That's 7. Sometimes you get them little, little small ones that are just too small to eat it. You want to eat it. There we go. Got him. Wasn't sure I had him for a sec. I had to think about that one. Oh, goodness. Look at that one, guys. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Dog. That's a dog. That's a dog. That's not the biggest dog, but that's a dog. That's, that's nice to know those are down there. All right. That's eight. Eight. Eight big dogs. There's one. Got him. Gotta feel the weight. Gotta feel the weight. Yeah, that's legal. That's legal. That's mm, 10, I think, 10. That's, that's legal. That's cheeky. 11. 11 with a mouth open a little. That means he's 10 with a mouth closed by a lot. So, I think that's 10. 10 fish. Got him. I don't know if that's a crappie. That thought kind of weird. Oh, it is a big one. Big old, big old crappie. Nice. Ain't complaining about that one. That thing fought kind of weird. Got a really good thump on it. Oh, that's a fat crappie. Nice. All right. We like one more. One more, we have half a limit. Oh, that wind is blowing, guys. Got him. All right, there's my limit fish right there. Oh, yes, sir. Nice one, too. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, Louisville is a hard fishing lake, guys. It is. And uh, it's hard to get out here and catch these fish. But you can see. If you're determined you want to get out here and do it, you can. You know? You just look down on my live wheel. See what I got? I got a mess. All I want to clean, I can tell you. That's it. That's all I want to clean. 